Welcome to DeltaCast Tutorials. Today I'm gonna to be applying a orthoglass co-optation splint using sling on a roll. This particular application is very, very uncomfortable for the patient. And one of the biggest problems we have is that we're gonna apply this splint all the way to the AC joint of the patient, all the way around on the lateral side of the extremity, underneath the elbow, underneath all the way up to the axial area or the armpit of the patient. Now, what's vital to this is that those, those structures that have been injured is gonna be more than likely for a proximum humerus fracture. You, you cannot really move the arm as much. We're gonna move her arm a little bit, but we have to really be conscious of that. And one of the questions is, how do you get it up in the armpit, the splint? We'll get a, number one, we're gonna use an assistant, and I'll be representing that uh, at the same time. But the biggest thing is how to get this up in the armpit. So our position we're gonna have this patient in is at 90 degrees flex at the elbow. And again, this is a proximal humerus fracture, so we're gonna go underneath the armpit all the way to the ACG. That's how much we're gonna apply. The problem is after we put it on and people don't, are not gonna understand, you know, how do you keep it from sliding at times? Well, got a solution for you, works many a times, different ways to apply it, but we're gonna use sling on a roll. And what we're gonna do is counterbalance that arm by attaching the, the sling portion to the orthoglass splint at the end, at the proximal end here, and then bring it around the shoulder with this nice comfortable material here. And I think you'll be very pleased with it. Alternate way is using a stockinette, which stretches and it really irritates the back of the neck. Let's begin. So when we get ready to measure for this, we're gonna measure from the axilla area all the way around, and we use the unaffected side. Okay, so if I can get this arm and you can play with that arm a little bit easier or move it around without any issues. So I'm going to just go in the armpit here and, and then you can use a tape measure or pad in your choice and I go all the way to the AC joint. This is my measurement for my orthoglass. So even if I'm using an orthoglass or I'm using another substrate like plaster, the same way, okay? So now I put that aside and now I need to measure for the sling on the roll portion. That's gonna to attach to the proximal end of the splint that's gonna be attached to her affected side. So what I'll do next, I'll have her position from the front so you guys can see how I measure that. When we get ready to measure for the sling on the roll, again, it's gonna be attached. This is the affected side is gonna be attached at the proximal end here and go around her neck and attach at the wrist, okay? So that's where we measure from. You can either get some padding or you can use sling on the roll itself as the measurement and just bring it around and then have enough to loop underneath the wrist. And that is our measurement, okay? So I can cut that off knowing that's the measurement I will use. Okay, what we have here is our orthoglass template measurement. Then we have our sling on a roll measurement that's already cut. Now let's prepare it. So we're gonna get our Y tabs, hook portion, attach one in. And again, one side is gonna be looped around the person's wrist the infected side and the other portion is gonna be attached to the orthoglass using different cuts. Okay, so what we have now, is we have our sling on a roll pre-cut. I added the Y tab, so on. I measured that, got that prepared. Here's my template for the orthoglass. So let's go ahead and cut the orthoglass. And again, you'll be using sizes that's comparable to the patient's diameter of their extremity. You do not want to totally go circumferential. So be conscious of the three inch, four inch, five inch, whatever size you need for the patient's arm. Go ahead and cut this. Just give myself a little extra for error. So let's close it up since we just cut it. Push it down. Give myself a good inch or so of extra foil. Closure there, make a nice little crimp there, upside down T, and make sure there's no wrinkles in this and it closes smoothly, so make sure it's airtight. And let's put this aside. 
All right, so let's prepare the splint. So we have a nice little padded edge because this is brand new on one end here. So let's take care of this side. You might wanna use gloves on this because we're gonna open this, we're gonna peel it like a banana, if you will, and open it up and get some cuts or modify it. And we have the resealable tape in here, so it's kinda nice. So let's peel this down, fold this lengthwise, make a little cut in here, as so. And then close it back up. Let me take a little bit of that down. Okay, so we have a nice padded edge there. All right, so I got this prepared. Let's go ahead and put some stock in that over the, uh, the splint itself. And this is gonna make an easy application to the patient. Go ahead and grab the, the splint and just slide your splint through. Now what we're gonna do is make what we call little tails on the end so we can just slide it through there and get it in that space in the axilla area. All right. And this is where we're gonna go ahead and make our little cuts through the stockinettes. Get our sling on the roll. And because this has a little hook portion there, go ahead and fold that down so you can get past that through that little hole without it sticking to anything. And this is gonna be nice and comfortable on the end that can bother the patient around their neck area. Let's cut that a little bit more. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is use these little tails, if you will, to slide, you know, slide through this area. And again, the assistant is helping the patient by holding the affected side to their chest and having them lean over just a little bit and let gravity open up this space just a little bit more. So just for your viewpoint, the patient's arm is at a 90 degree angle. So now we have this up in that axilla area and now all we do is apply the splint to the affected side and it sandwiches it like it needs to be. Get my elastic bandages and I'm for your six so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna come over on the, the front of the patient, but you need to be here on that side. Figure eight around the elbow. Now be conscious of how much you're pulling because their, swole, their arm is probably inflamed a, a tad here. So we don't want to capture a lot of pulling of fluid distally. Now this is the part where you make sure your ego doesn't get ahead of you 
If you know you don't have that much elastic bandage left over, finish that off. And start with a new one. Because if it unrolls, then it's going to uh, delay your application. Again, do not put this too tight. Now we do a really high wrap over the shoulder, and we're trying to cover all of the splint up. And again, the patient is not very comfortable, but our goal is to make sure that this stays in position as you apply it. And that's the biggest thing that you really want to concentrate on. You have it in a nice position, but it slips. And that can be your Achilles heel on applying this particular splint. Tape that down. Now what we're going to do is just turn the patient around so you can see how, how, what we're, going, how we're going to attach the sling on the roll. Do this little modification just to shorten this up just a little bit. And what's convenient about this, the provider can, depending on how the fracture is, is it uh, anterior displaced, posterior displaced, medial lateral, they can position the patient a lot faster. All right, so now we have that there, secure this portion with tape, and now we can position the patient with ease and it stays, it counterbalances to keep the splint from pulling down. So this is a unique way to apply the uh, sling and roll or the co-optation splint. And remember, the patient needs to be at 90 degrees at the elbow, be conscious of over pulling the elastic bandage because we don't want any pulling the fluid to get really trapped and it's, it starts to really uh, put a lot of pressure on the lower portion of the hand and wrist area. If you can get this on pretty fast, it allows the provider to go ahead and do their mold that they need for the immobilization. Again, this particular portion going around the patient's neck is going to be a lot more like a terry cloth feel to their neck and it doesn't neck down or lose its strength. So it's going to be a lot more comfortable for the patient. Again, this is the co-optation splint using orthoglass, but applying sling on a roll as a counterbalance to keep the orthoglass or the co-optation splint from sliding down. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding DeltaCast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.